you said that No Love Boulevard is your last album. Then you talked about this one record where you said there could be a glimmer of hope. Uh, you also talked about uh, you were 10 records deep when you came up with the, um, the thought of this being your last album. Well, it wasn't premeditated when you were making the album. Uh, you also mentioned uh, bipolarness and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, you have multiple aliases for right. multiple personalities, like right. one right. day you're Joseph McVeigh, another you're Zero Vandross and all that. Right. So is this statement that you made saying, this is my last album, could this be part of being bipolar? One day you feel up, the next day you feel down, that type of thing? I wouldn't say so because uh, this wasn't even uh, a down a down time. Uh, I haven't had a down time for about a good six or seven years. But uh, this decision was made solely off of what's going on around me. And uh, I wanna say the shit that I'm doing now is late blooming. Like this is the shit I should have been doing. And I'm not gonna say I'm pessimistic, but I'm not an optimist at the same time. Uh, the statement or the saying is life imitating art. But when you're dealing with me, it's art imitating life. And what I mean by that is this, uh, ever since 1998, when I released Look What You Did To Me, my main subject matter has been the flaw of other people, which innately is my flaw. If I was a regular person, we are designed to take so much from people and still be able to be people. I snap. I don't snap like I'm just gonna, you know, you know, separate you from yourself type snap, but I mean, I'm gonna stop fucking with you at the drop of a dime. And since I'm always in the studio, I'm always doing music. I got my own studio, so. And I'm always rapping this, the, the, the type of shit that I rap. I'm always talking about the negative, and I talk about it so much, and I'm always critiquing my music. You know, when you're dealing with the independent artists like myself, I mean, everybody raps today. I mean, everybody can get some Pro Tools, Fruity Loops, or Cubase, whatever it is, and you're a producer. You rapping on a $100 mic in your grandma's basement, you're a rapper. And then you got the people who really count. So innately, you're battling all these people. And to keep up with a good war, you gotta have weapons. And my weapon is my music. So I'm always doing music so I can always be armed and dangerous. And since I'm always critiquing myself, I'm riding around in my vehicles, listening to me, seeing what I need to change, seeing what I need to keep the same. I need a new beat here. I don't like that, scratch that. And I'm steady digesting all this, all this ridicule. I'm steady digesting all this judgment upon other people and so much so to where I cannot have a regular life. I can't have no friends because I'm gonna see some whole ass shit that they doing. And on the regular, real people do whole ass shit without knowing. I just come from a time where I don't do no whole ass shit. The only whole ass shit I probably can be perceived to be doing is you wake up and I don't fuck with you no more. And that's why I ain't got no bitch. Because to have a boyfriend if you're a chick or to have a, you know, a, a girlfriend if you're a dude, you got to be able to deal with that shit that this other person is doing. I can't do it because I'm going to see some shit I said in my song every time I look at you and it's gonna fuck the relationship up, the situationship up, any type of shit it is, I'm not able to have it. So by me not doing music, 
that shit make it easier on some of my baby mamas. It make it easier on some of my, I won't say friends, but I'll say uh, some of my associates. I'm not on their row as hard as I would be if I'm pulling up and I'm listening to finally I found me. Then I get out the car and I'm dealing with you right after this song go off and I'm, nigga, fuck all y'all. Fuck all these niggas and fuck all these hoes. When I needed to ride, you know, where y'all was at type shit. Now I'm pulling up now, like, oh, that's the wraith. Let me ride with you. Nah, bitch, I couldn't ride with you. And this sound fucked up. But I'd be like, nigga, you remember February of 1999, nigga, when you ain't let me ride, nigga, when I was walking down Ridge Van, nigga, with one shoe on? Nigga, fuck you. Get your bitch ass out of my mother. Get out of here, nigga. And it ain't supposed to be like that. But I mean, that shit kind of, I'm a sponge. I think I said that shit on one of my last interviews with, I'm a sponge to the shit that happens around me, and I'm a sponge to the music. And if it, the shit is sitting on top of my head, when I see you, and I just, I just got finished talking about some whole ass shit, you come doing some whole ass shit, I'm gonna be on 10. So that was one of my reasons, because out of all the kids that I have, I'm not saying that my baby mamas didn't do some whole ass shit, but I'm only cool with two of them. And I won't even let three of them make up with me because of how I look at they motherfucking ass. And it's because of the music. Uh, past managers and shit, somebody, you know, a couple of cats you know, I can't even shake their motherfucking hand no more because I want to go in their mouth. When I look at myself like, nigga, look where you live. Look what you drive, and then look what you drive, and then look what you drive, and then look what you drive. Like Pimp C said back in the guy, nigga, what is you mad for? And, and it's not that I'm mad, but it's just like, oh no, I remember you, you a whore and a half. You a bitch ass and a half ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? You, you a whole hoe. I can't, it's hard for me to differentiate. So when I go a couple of days without music, I smile. Some shit I ain't never did. In like 30 some years, and then man, I smiled big than a motherfucker like two, three months ago, and that shit, that shit was online. And they start making memes about the shit. Legend has it, when Zero smiles, uh, the sky rains, drinking birds sing Big Mo songs. That shit pissed me the fuck off at first, but then I was like, my teeth straight than a motherfucker though. Like that, that shit look good on me. So I was like, damn, it wasn't shit going on. I wasn't jamming no music for a week straight. I just had my little girl, I had my youngest and my oldest, which, which, is, a, which is another reason I have to leave some of this shit alone because my oldest is 27. My youngest is seven. Everything I do rub off on these people. And I don't want all that zero shit to rub off on them, so. Are you a loner? Of course all the way along. Is that lonely? Are you a lonely guy at your age right now? I'm not lonely. Because I mean, I be amongst the plethora of people, but I'm really with me. Antisocial? Antisocial. Is it a sense of paranoia too? Hell yeah it is. That's the first thing you feel. Because with me, I don't know if you fucking with zero, I don't know if you're fucking with Joseph. I don't want to be a second time fool for nobody, so I, I don't allow the first time. And I mean, I'm not out looking for no injustice. I mean, I just come around and I just be chilling. I come around and I, I just, being quiet, you can hear all the shenanigantry that's going on. You can witness it. And I mean, this shit just makes me a loner. I mean, if you come up and you spark conversation and it's, I'm conversate. I mean, because I talk like a motherfucker. It's just I watch who I talk to. And being me, I probably see six people a week. That's it. I only see six people a week. I don't come out my motherfucking house unless it's time to be, see, now it's the weekend, it's time to be zero. Yeah, I'm finna see, you know, 2,500, 3,000 motherfuckers. But... I get back to Houston, everything at the crib. Mm. You know, he go to pole, strip of bitches, come on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
pool party in the back, go upstairs, do this game. I mean, everything is everything is here, so I don't have a reason to leave unless it's mm. three, four in the morning and I'm on some Walmart shit. You know, go and go get my grapes and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, that 32 pack of, you know, ribbed for them strippers or some shit like that. But, uh, it sounds like a bunch of this stuff is definitely a result of maybe past relationships and, uh, you know, like you mentioned, you had mentioned man ex-managers and stuff like that and uh, quote-unquote the hoe in somebody and stuff like that. But is this also this feeling that you have, your outlook on life and so on and so forth, is this also a result of your age? Nah, because I don't feel different at all. I don't feel different at all, and I don't see too many people at my age doing what I'm doing. Like most people my age, they shirt tucked in. They going to work, punching the clock. Like I'm, for what I'm doing, I get the most money in my city for doing this shit. And so I'm kind of, it's not the age, it's just, it's just simply the actions that have taken place. Because mm. I feel more alive right now than I ever have. This the first time I can actually say like, oh shit, I got some funds. I got a, like, I'm not in a house no more. I'm in, I'm in that motherfucker, you know, uh, down to the shit that don't mean nothing, like the jewels and shit. I mean, the money, like, if you look at it from that aspect, you'll be like, what the fuck? What the fuck is the problem? Cause ain't shit wrong. Ain't shit wrong, you know? Uh, the child support shit pays itself. Uh, everything is I like. I don't do shit. I don't do shit but wake up and smoke and do a song, and go here if I'm paid to go here. Go there if I'm paid to go there. That's all I do. My main thing has just really been people, and it's not fan people or like anybody that's directly responsible for me being rich right now. Like, I love them motherfuckers. But it's the people who help you get there. Your intermediate circle. That's it. That's the only motherfucker who counts as far as temperament goes. And I ain't had no, I, I haven't had a 100. And, and it takes a machine to do this shit. I don't give a fuck who you are. You gonna have to, you know, the music is one thing. But servicing your shit, and doing all the shit that it takes to get your shit out there, it takes a team of people, it takes a machine. And a lot of motherfuckers are just not trustworthy. A lot of motherfuckers waste your whole time and in some cases they waste your fucking career. So you get to a point to where you set a, well me, I set a quota for myself. And I'm like, okay, when I set this quota for myself, I'ma sit back and be like, okay, I'ma see how this one goes. And if this one goes, you know, the normal 250 to 500,000, all right, cool, I'm gonna back away or back away for a little while. You know, if this motherfucker does something really, really, really retarded on the positive side, i stick around. I personally can't see this being your last album because common sense tells me you have a studio in your crib, you're used to making <laughs> a song a day, you still have the King and the Boss collab album coming at some point. You still right. have another collab album with... Uh, right. Uh, with Beans and Cornbread. Beans and Cornbread coming at yeah. some point. But that's why I said my final solo album. I just don't believe that. Well, my whole, my whole thing was... And you said you're even more alive now than you ever been <laughs> before. Yeah, so, yeah okay, I'm, I'm I more alive. Common sense tells me this is false. Well, I mean... When you look at it the way I'm looking at it, like, well, just to be honest, I've already began to sell zero albums. This is the last album I have something to do with. Okay. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you do your career, you drop your albums, then something happens to you, somebody get their hands on your shit, they release your shit. Mm. Or whoever's in control of your estate, they allow motherfuckers to come in and drop your shit or seal your shit off. 
I'm alive on some, hey, you can have this for X amount of, you know. Oh. You know what I'm saying? But I'm see. not shooting no motherfucking videos. <laughs> I'm not going to do no motherfucking, I'm going to do my shit. Kind of like, take The Crown, for example. I got paid to do The Crown album from Mr. Lee and, uh, at this point, I even forgot the label. Mm. I've never performed a song off of that shit. I never shot a video for that shit. Never did an interview about that shit. It's some shit that I that I traded for some money and, and, and some cars. And I was on to melting the crown after that. Mm. And I mean, it's a situation, cause I mean, I've got, I mean, well I can't say between me and you cause everybody watching, <laughs> but I have 2,024 unreleased songs right now. And out of those 2,024 unreleased songs, I have 12 albums mixed and mastered and ready to go. <laughs> and, that, and that's just a result of every time I turned in an album to somebody, I kept to. But I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, do the math. You I'm, sound like a walking 401k plan. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And doing that type of 401k plan, that means I don't have to touch a microphone no more if I don't want to. Now, of course, when they call, hey, man, you going to do a show? Shit, you going to pay? I'm going to come do the show. But as far as releasing, oh, you know, cool. hey, man, I need to buy a hook. All right, cool. I need to buy a beat. I need to, how much for the studio time? You know, I'm going to do all that. Mm. But it's just far as me getting, like with this album, I got, I'm got i five albums, I mean, I'm five videos deep for No Love Boulevard right now. Uh, Ghetto Gospel gonna come, I got a video for that. You know, naturally me and Slim, we got videos for King and the Boss, me and Mike D, Screwed Up Click, you know, we got two, three videos for To The Hard Way, our album. But all of these are duets. Mm. Me and Mike D, me and Slim Thug, me and Beans and Cornbread. You know, uh, even back, to, I mean, I don't know if me and Maya still gonna release uh, Loyalty and Royalty, but mm. I got an album with her that we started doing back in, I think, 2011. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I it's a whole lot that. of, yeah, it's a whole lot of shit that I have with other people. That, But I have 12 solo zero albums, you know, uh, that's mixed and mastered and ready to go. So, but I mean, Far as hands on, no love Boulevard. 